the Ant Eaters of Irvine with a bit of open water at the finish. It is Michigan right here. And indeed, Notre Dame holding on to that third spot. Bowden so close in fourth. Rutgers and now finally Virginia. And it looks like we have a start here. Semi-final number three of the men's varsity eight. And we're looking at uh, the UC Davis Aggies here, again, led by Desmond Stahl, a well-known coach. He's led some programs to uh, great success here. And let's go down the line. In lane one, we have Colorado. Lane two, Boston College. Lane three, Minnesota. Lane four, Vanderbilt. Lane five, those Aggies. And lane six, Virginia Tech. Looks like we are through the breakage point. And as soon as we get that camera angle, we will give you some placing here. Wow. Look at this. This beautiful shot here from the drone. It looks like the Aggies here. Uh, UC Davis pretty close with Vanderbilt and Minnesota. Minnesota may be taking the lead here. Is that kind of what I'm seeing here? Absolutely. I am seeing Minnesota with a slight lead. I mean, I'm going to call it by maybe a deck right now for that lead position just in front of uh, Boston College. So um, let's see. Mm, yep, that would be Minnesota with just a slight lead over. I'm sorry, that would be Vanderbilt on in lane four. So Minnesota in the lead just by a canvas over Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt with a six seat lead over UC Davis. UC Davis may be one seat over Boston College. So Boston College in fourth, but right next to them will be Virginia Tech and then finally Colorado. So a lot of overlap between these crews. Nobody has open water. Uh, we're seeing everyone settle down and get into their base race. And we're seeing some pretty fast times out here today. There is really just favorable conditions. Sometimes, as we know, as it heats up, the conditions can sometimes get a little bit faster, but really not much challenge coming out of these conditions at all. Just really ideal here at beautiful Melton Lake in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Minnesota taking advantage of these conditions and now pushing themselves out to a little bit larger of a lead, maybe now three seats over Vanderbilt. But you know what I have to say, not even by that much, because look at Virginia Tech, who kind of is our, our trailing eight here, not even that far behind the leader. So these boats are actually pretty close coming down the line, about 220 into this race. So they're kind of settling in. We may start to see a little bit more separation here. It may be a power versus rate, uh, rate thing. Not really sure yet. It's going to be really exciting to see. Look at this. Bow ball to bow ball coming down the line. Minnesota and Vanderbilt, I believe. Is that what I'm seeing here? That is correct. They are pretty much dead even, I would say. You know, and Minnesota and Vanderbilt, like, they have pushed each other. They're almost like stroke for stroke. If you're looking at this, and there we go. We've got another bucket rig in that Vanderbilt boat on the starboard side. Um, and it's working to their advantage. I'm going to give a very, very slight advantage right now to Vanderbilt, maybe by a bow ball for that lead position. But again, there is no one that is trailing. There's no one that's being left behind. Everyone is still within contact to each other. What's changed a little bit is that third place position. I'm going to move over to uh, Davis. So Davis pushing themselves into third, just barely being able to hold off Boston College. So Boston College looking all the way across the race course at UC Davis, seeing if they can maybe take away a little bit from Davis, sneak themselves into that into that C level final. So we'll watch them as they progress down the race course, and then right there with them, it's Virginia Tech in the in this sixth place position it will be Colorado so just slightly off pace but again still within contact now I really want to hand it to Vanderbilt here I have to say this is a very impressive performance by them they've had a lot of turnover during COVID and even just before that they ended up having their alumni buy them a bunch of singles so they could even get out on the water and they lost so many members of their team and they've really come back together after half of their their squad not even knowing how to sweep row and now here they are 
you know, one of the things that I learned in talking to some of the coaches too is that transitioning into those sculling boats has really helped them in the big boats. There's something about learning how to row a single, rowing a double, rowing a pair that allows you to be more responsive and perceptive about how you're moving an eight. So if you can be learn to be sensitive to the power that you have in a single, it translates perfectly over into the big boat and you can really figure out if you're effective or not. And right now, I mean, they are doing such a great job here in uh, that Vanderbilt boat. They've really pushed themselves out just a bit farther over Minnesota. I'm looking at about a stern advantage now at 1,500 meters. So 500 meters to go. Vanderbilt now with that solid lead. Minnesota right behind them. This looks like Davis now for that third place spot. They are holding off Boston College and Virginia Tech with Colorado coming into that sixth place position. Absolutely. And you know, the value in those small boats and sculling like that, you see very often in Europe and the UK, they really, really value those small boats. And so I think COVID has kind of taught us a lot of that here in the US to actually put our athletes in those small boats. And look what's happening. We are seeing some phenomenal big boat racing because of rowing so many of those small boats. And a lot of even these novice boats and some of the small boats um, just look great. That's they, right. That's right. These varsity crews, again, as we've talked about, there could be a varied mix of athlete in these in these boats. We could have uh, some varsity members that started rowing their freshman year and didn't get to race for the for the the previous two years, you know, so they could be considered novices. They've got an extension rule with the eligibility, and that's really proven to be um, a, a good choice for a lot of these crews. But for some, they could be true novices in their first year of rowing. Hard to tell, but at this point, we've got Vanderbilt taking full advantage of their fitness as they continue to push themselves a little bit farther away from Minnesota. Coxon, most likely, I'm going to guess, calling for open water at that finish line, and they've got it. So Vanderbilt with about two seats of open water. They are first across that line, followed by Minnesota. And now here comes Davis. Those are your top three crews to move into the third level final. They're followed by Boston College and now Virginia Tech. And then finally, Colorado.